Hello and welcome to your 14th UDK tutorial and in this tutorial we're just going to learn about textures and how to add an image to your material. So to start off with let's just open up our content browser and last time we created material 01 so let's just create a new asset and I'm going to call my material 02 and of course we want the factory to be material. Okay so it's just going to open up in this content browser and let's just scroll around and you'll notice I, my material expression pane isn't actually here anymore and I, all I did is click the little X up here but this is just because if you right click you actually get a much more organized list of material expressions that you can add so we're just going to be using that so anywho this is all about textures now I've told you before a texture and a material they're completely different things now a texture is pretty much just an image of something so if it was if you wanted to have like some kind of floor texture if someone just took a picture of the floor and slapped it on a cube brush that would be textured however a material is kind of like it's that image so it usually includes a texture plus lots of information about depth and the way light reacts with the material and all that kind of stuff it's pretty much all of our channels here so anywho this is all about textures we can either go into Photoshop and create a texture and a normal map, but don't worry about normal maps yet, we're going to talk about them a little bit later. Or what we can do is we can just use one that's built into UDK, which for now is a lot easier. So let's just get both of these up, and we're just going to find a material. So, sorry, not material, a texture. So let's go to textures, sorry, all assets. And then. Let's have a look at this. What does it say? Outdoors. Base tile. Moss normal. You want to, if I just maximize this, you want to find one that has something with underscore N at the end and one with underscore D. So this black rock one looks pretty decent. So I'm just going to click on it to select it. And by the way, if you're interested, this is UN underscore rock 2 underscore black rock 02 underscore D. So let's just maximize our material editor again. And all we're going to do is we're going to right click, we're going to go to texture, and we're going to add a new texture sample expression. And we're eventually going to line this up with diffuse, so just control it up here. And ah, uh -huh. since we've created it as we had it selected, it's figured out that we want to choose this texture. If you created your texture sample before you selected the texture, you can go ahead and click this green arrow, which just means set it to the currently selected object in the content browser. So if we just go ahead and join this to diffuse, you'll see, okay, it kind of has this rock texture or whatever it was supposed to be. It's probably like rocky. But it all looks very flat. It's not looking very rocky. I mean, look at this part here. It looks like it's kind of supposed to have some depth, but it doesn't. It's just a black line. Now, this is because, although we've just applied a text to it, all we've really done is slapped an image on it. If we then want to vary the depth, we have to use what's called a normal map. So if we go back to our content browser, aha, this is where this underscore N comes in, because underscore N stands for the normal map. So if we click on this, you'll see it has those different colors, and this is just pretty much where it wants to indent and where it wants to be further out on the material. So if we just then create another texture sample expression, we just right click texture, texture sample, and again it's automatically done that, and let's just drag it out here because we want to line this up with normal. And normal, again it's to do with the way that light reacts with it, but pretty much it's just kind of the bumpiness and the depth of your material. So if we just line this up with normal, look at the preview window over there, currently it's looking very flat. If we line it up with normal you'll see, wow, now it actually has some depth to it. Now it doesn't quite look right because this, this uh, texture I've used isn't really supposed to be applied to a sphere, but you can kind of see that it now does actually have some depth rather than just being a flat image slapped on top of a sphere. So that's really all we're going to do in this tutorial. All we've done is we created a texture sample expression that just has the image and that's linked to diffuse which remember is pretty much just the overall look of your material and then we've lined up our normal map to our normal channel and that's actually given it some real depth so if we just go ahead and save it by clicking apply changes up here and let's just cross this window off now and let's just try 
let's just clear this. Let's try applying it to something. So let's just CSG add in a cube brush. And let's go ahead and drag on material load 2. This probably needs a bit of scaling, but it's not too much of an issue. You can now see that has actually got some depth to it. And we have actually created a material with a texture. So uh, that's the end of this tutorial, and have a nice day.